Hello and welcome back to another Cookie Tech video. So today I'm going to be teaching you on how you can use proximity prompts inside of your own Roblox game. Proximity prompts allows players to interact with objects and it's basically a bit like a click detector. So if you don't know what proximity prompts are, don't worry. You can see we have one here on my screen. If I walk far enough, it'll turn away. And if we go close enough, it'll expand. And now you can notice if we hold E, and go to our output by pressing F9 or going view output. You can see it says cookie dev X, which is my username use me. Now I'm going to show you how you can add proximity prompts inside of your very own studio instance. All right, so here we are inside of Roblox studio. Now to create a proximity prompt, it must be a child of a base part model or attachment. So today I'm just going to be using a base part so it's super simple and we're going to click on part, we're going to move it up a little bit and then we're going to anchor it. Then to add a proximity prompt we're going to click on the plus button and then we're going to type in proximity prompt. Now the proximity prompt has quite a lot of things you can customise so I'm going to put a picture up on the screen and then I'll explain for it. So. To actually edit the properties of the proximity prompt, we must click on the proximity prompt itself and you can see I'm now going to show that picture. So first things first, let's talk about the keyboard key code or the gamepad key code. So you can see on screen, it's that big giant circle with the letter and then a little key symbol around it. And now that tells the player that they must press or hold that specific key. So to edit this, we need to scroll down and you can see there's going to be keyboard key code. Now I want this to be on E, so I'm going to make sure it's selected as E, but of course you can use anything else you want to, but just to keep it simple, I'm going to keep it on E. Now gamepad key code. So let's say somebody's playing on Xbox. You can also select which gamepad key can be used in order to initiate the proximity prompt. Um, on default, it's set to button X, so I'm just going to keep it on that. Next of all, we have object text. So we can find that by scrolling down a tiny bit. If we can't find it, we can always search it. And you can see there it is. And now object text is an optional name for the object being interacted with. So I'm just going to set this to part, so we know that we're touching the part. Now, let's talk about the action text. So this is a little piece of text that shows up. It's optional and basically in short words you can explain to the user what this proximity prompt does. So let's head back and let's have a look at action text. By default it's set to interact. Now I'm going to keep it set to interact too. Of course you can customize this. So for example if it was a door you could set it to be open. If it was a light you could set it to be lit. But you can do all of that other stuff. Now let's actually get into a little bit of the other stuff. So visibility. Now there are a few things you must know before you start scripting your proximity prompt. There is a max activation distance and this means the user must be in a certain proximity of something to use a proximity prompt. So to edit this we can go to max activation distance and these are measured in studs. I'm going to keep it at 10, so that means you must be at least within 10 studs to see the proximity prompt. And now the next thing, we have the requires line of sight. Now this means there must be nothing blocking the path of the proximity prompt to see it. So you can set this to be on or off, it depends on what your personal preference is. So, depending on how you can set it, people will be able to see it through walls, if not, they won't be able to see it. Now the interactivity aspect of this. And as you can remember, I had to hold it down for some time. So let's go to hold duration. And now you can set this for how long. So if it's set to zero, as soon as the user presses down on the proximity prompt, everything will be fired. I'm going to set it to be three. So you need to hold down the proximity prompt for three seconds for it to work. Now, let's actually get into some scripting. So let's click on the plus button of the part and then let's add a script. Now we're going to create a variable and we're going to define the proximity prompt. So we're going to say local proximity prompt one and then we're going to say 
script dot parent and then we're going to say dot proximity prompt great now to detect when a proximity prompt is triggered we can actually use the triggered function so we can actually just say proximity prompt one so when it's triggered connect function and now we can also get the player by typing in player and we can get the player object that used the proximity prompt now we're going to add in a simple piece of code in here and you can do anything you want with this part but i'm going to do something simple and i'm going to change the color of this part so i'm going to say script dot parent and now what we're going to do is we're going to say dot color equals brick color dot new and now let's type in the color and let's just put in red and then let's just put in really red now we're also going to add in a print statement and we're going to say print and then we're going to say somebody used if i can type somebody used the proximity prompt and i'm just going to say prox prompt for short and then we're going to put they are called colon and then we're going to put a space after this colon while inside the string so it isn't merged together and now we're going to concatenate it by saying dot dot and then remember we defined the player above in our function we're going to say player and then dot name with a capital n now let's give this a quick go so let's head into play and then let's see if this works And as you can see to that, if we hold E, takes a while. Ah, it looks like we've had a bug. Let's see what's happened. Unable to assign property color dot color through expected got brick color. So it turns out you can't use brick color here. That's completely fine. We can actually just say color three dot new. And then in here, we can put a colon so I'm going to set it to be white 255 255 255 you can also use this color wheel by clicking on this button and then you can mess around with that and now let's see if that works so let's click play and let's hold a look the part changed color let's hold f9 Somebody used the prox prompt, they're called great. And now let's just make sure if we walk back far enough, you can see the proximity prompt disappears. So thank you for watching this video today. Hopefully you learned something new. If you'd like any help with scripting or you have any errors with this script, feel free to head over to our forums, link in the description down below, create a scripting support post, and myself or another scripter will help you. Thank you for tuning in and bye bye.